Quiet! By the time I said, oh, I'm going to interview kids, a lot of people told me, hey man, ask this and ask that, I must see them. What do you think that happens this fascination of the fans about the band? Because we are so dedicated to our fans, our fans are so dedicated to us, you know. Um, when we travel, we try to make it a point to do television because it is like being a guest in somebody's house. So people have many questions and we are here to give them the answers. How was the first concert? Was, was it your biggest crowd? I was watching that heavy metal decline and you were telling this. Our biggest crowd ever. Maracanã? Maracanã, that's it. Maracanã was a, a very, very high point for us because we had heard how big we were in Brazil. And uh, people had talked about their tours and other people said to us, you are much bigger. So when we came over and uh, we came into the stadium at Maracanã and it was packed with all these people, you are so touched to fly 12 hours to see people who are your neighbors. They are not people in another country. They are your friends. They live on the same street as you and they embrace you as family. So it is very powerful. And um, we didn't want to come back until now because I think we made such a big impression and we gave our hearts and souls that we wanted to make sure that when we came back we could give as much. And we are here because we can give that much. This is work quite big action. What was the re reaction of the fans in the beginning when they looked like you wearing that makeup? What did they think about? I think many people said, I may not look like that band, but I feel in my heart just like those guys. I cannot look as crazy, but I am crazy inside. We are all crazy inside, and perhaps we get a chance to go out on stage and live what some of the other people can't. But the truth is, everybody has it in their power to go out and live a free life. Life is to be free and do whatever you want. Have a great time, whatever makes you happy. Women, whatever. By the time that you were wearing makeup, were you recognizing on the streets like people should recognize you? Oh, sure. With no makeup? Sure. It's funny because people say, oh, it was such a great idea because then you could go around without makeup and nobody knew who you were. But during the 70s, if you saw us on the street, if you saw me on the street, I had black hair down to here. I had platform shoes like this. I always dressed the same, we all did. So the fact that we didn't have the makeup, it wasn't like Clark Kent and Superman. When we walked down the street, someone would look and say, that's Kiss. And we were proud of it. And did you think about taking off the makeup by the time you start wearing, you, you thought about one day we're going to take it off or that's our image and we will always be like this? What was the idea? Like when you're a child, you you have all kinds of things uh, in your mind that's that's very limited. You can never imagine yourself driving a car, but then you do. You can never imagine yourself having a sexual relationship with a girl, and then you do. You can never imagine yourself doing many things, and you do. And when we were first forming the band, we were like children. It was all excitement, all new. We were rock and roll virgins, and we could never imagine Kiss without makeup. And then you cross that threshold, and then you see that all things are possible as long as it's in your heart. Video to accompany the Kiss My Ass album, which is going to be titled Kiss My Ass the Video. Or Beige Me right? Cool? Beige Me Cool, yeah. yeah. The video. <laughs> and uh, this is going to have uh, show some of the bands that are on the record the making of their particular song that they recorded for the album, as well as a lot of uh, vintage makeup era videos and a lot of things that you've never probably seen before some commercial advertisements and uh, uh, I think there's some TV show things right from Com talk shows commercials yeah. for uh, kiss I think toys or uh, merchandise some really unique things that people probably haven't seen it especially in Brazil you probably haven't seen mm -hmm. it. and it's all these pieces that come from our library we have hundreds and hundreds of hours of concerts and every once in a while we put them together for our fans and Eric you know, has a special point of view because Eric, before he joined the band, was a fan. You know, he used to come to see the band and although he's played in other groups, matter of fact, one of the bands that's playing as our support here, Black Sabbath, Eric was in that band at one point. Yeah. And uh, 
Eric was always a fan, so it's always interesting when we put together a video for him to look at it and for him to tell us what he thinks is needed in it, because sometimes perhaps we are too close. He has become almost, he went from a fan and also a musician who we respected very highly to becoming a member of the band. So oh, he brings something. Was it difficult to follow? I'm joining Keys? No, uh, well, because like Paul said, I've, I've always been a musician. I mean, I've all, I'm still to this day a fan of many bands, but I, just like many people, I started off Paul and Gene and Bruce the same thing. When they were younger, they went to concerts and saw many bands and said, "I, you know, I always felt I want to do that too." And I put, you know, I played with many different bands, and um, so I did. It wasn't like a fan going, "Oh, I get to be the drummer and Kiss now." I mean, it was a, a great honor for me to join the band, but I looked at it from a different perspective, from a musician standpoint. Yeah. You know, I, I knew these guys before. Your brother almost joined yeah. the band, and he was a What's part of the history. Brother Bob, as we call him. Yeah. And, um, you know, the situation really, the time was right when the guy Mark got sick and I was asked to just fill in actually temporarily. And then all of a sudden it was like he wasn't getting better, I was doing a good job. It was just, you know, the time was right. It just happened. And I, I'll be honest, um, even when Vinnie Vincent was in the band after Ace, I felt like, hey, I, I should have that gig. I'd really be great for the band. And you should have. Yeah, I know, I know. But fate, fate takes its course. In the beginning we were very rock and roll, and then we started flirting with metal and then pop. How was this? Because of the changes of the lineup? Or? I think we reached a point where perhaps we listened to too many people outside of the band, and perhaps we became at one point a bit lazy with our own success. And sometimes you begin to believe that you want to please the critics, and you want to please people who really are not your friends. And you start to go away from what is honest. And uh, you believe that you are giving 100%, but you are perhaps serving a different master. You know, you are not working for what you once believed in. And it sometimes takes a while before you, you sit and you say, you know, we're on the wrong road. You take a journey and sometimes you the road forks off and you go this way and you go down for quite a way and suddenly you go, we're on the wrong road. We have to go back. You found out this. Better. I think by the late 80s, we finally thought, you know, we need to get back to our roots. We need to get back to a pure form of rock and roll. But it's not so simple just to say, okay, we're going to turn up the amps. We had to, as people, stop bullshitting and doing things besides the band and spending time away from the music. We had to commit ourselves again to being a band and making music what the most important priority was for us. It wouldn't be a matter of, oh, if we turn up, we're gonna sound like we once did. Your frame of mind and where your heart is, is what counts. Where your heart is now, like what do you like doing in music, the band, with the band. This is that this last album satisfy you, like Revenge is the right album of, of keys or? I, I think you can only do the best. If you feel at the end of the day that you've done the best you can do, like on a particular record, then that's where the satisfaction is. When it comes to the next record, then you try to start all over again and make the best record you can make. And it's really about the songs. It's it's not about trends or style or anything. I mean, Kiss. Is, if you listen from the even with without the makeup, just on the records alone, you know, when you're sitting in your room with a stereo, you don't have the makeup to look at. You have just the, the songs and the music to listen to, and that's what Kiss is about music and so the whole idea I think I think everyone will probably agree the band's trying to basically go back almost like things go full circle and that's you know what is the band about it's about music and songs so I think that's where you know the direction is rather than worrying about what's going on in the music world around history many times uh, our fans have said we want the ultimate kiss book and sometimes people would attempt to make books but the truth is, the only people who could do the ultimate KISS book is KISS. We have photos no one's ever seen of the band during the 70s without makeup. We have all kinds of documentation. Off stage, behind, behind the scenes traveling. Um, we have pictures of Eric Carr and his original makeup as the Hawk. Oh yeah, the um, first. 
That's Prashant. right. We have interviews with people, um, all kinds of amazing things. And we decided that rather than going through a book company, because uh, we met with some book companies, and they all, because they're very corporate, you know, with their suits and ties, they said, oh, you should put this in the book, you should leave this out. And they don't know shit about Kiss. So we said, you know something? We will do the book ourselves. We will put the money up ourselves to do the ultimate Kiss book. So the biographical, sorry? It's gonna be kind of biographical. Biographical, with amazing photographs. There are 440 pages in the book. It weighs nine pounds, four and a half kilo. It is 11 and a half by 14 and a half. It's a huge book. It's this thick, and it has a case that it slides into. And the first, the first printing of the book is signed and numbered by the band. And the only way for someone to get the book is you must call. We have a number that we're going to give you so that you can call the book is $150 in the States because we spend so much time and when we met with the book companies they wanted to make it more expensive so they could make more money. We said no, this book must be this price because we want to put all this information into it but it is well worth the money and the orders for the book are so phenomenal and since we came into Brazil almost as soon as we got off the plane fans